you're, let's say, put yourself in this scenario. Okay. You're on The View. All right. Okay? Yes. And You've been on The View. <laughs> right? You've gone through this. I wife. have been on The View. I have. Mm-hmm. I have. So you're on The View, and it's Easter Friday. You know, it's Good Friday. What? You know, Joy says something to you. Your response is, shut up, Joy, you fat witch. <laughs> no, 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 that would not... No, it's again Good Friday. So okay, whoopee and, and whoopee, you, you two, you old hag. <laughs> okay, no, that's not not the way to do no, it. No, we that's shouldn't not, do it that no. way on Good Friday. That's what we're trying to tell people. We probably shouldn't do it on average Wednesday either. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, it's true. We probably now, shouldn't do that. I will say my uh, response yeah. was somewhat close to what you said when you were on the <laughs> when you when you were actually on. I the think view. I was complete. No. Well, no, maybe in the I, aftermath. I was, wasn't I? Maybe that was. Yeah, in the aftermath. I think I tried to be nice the whole time. Yeah. I Certainly yeah. off and then the air, we I went feel into like a I heard that type break. of response yeah. at one point or another. I mean, yeah. I mean, well, I don't know about that. That would be wrong of me. Mm-hmm. There was a guy, though, on The View uh, that I think we should play that does demonstrate how people better than us actually respond yeah this is coleman hughes who uh who is he wrote a book recently which is a great book it's about basically in defense of color blindness uh hey maybe we shouldn't abandon the, the idea that color blindness <laughs> is the goal here guys like I, I can't believe you need to write even a book about this but he did and it's very good and he went on the view and of course i, I mean just They had to give him the ad hominem uh, charlatan question, which is what you'd expect 100% from The View, when just praising the idea that we should be colorblind, this is the question he got. Your argument for colorblindness, I think, is something that the right has Uh co-opted. And so many in the black community, if I'm being honest with you, Mm -hmm. because I want to be, believe that you are being Mm -hmm. used as a pawn by the right, and that you're a charlatan of sorts. He's, he's not a Republican. Well, so how do you... Who, who, he's never voted well, you, for you, 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 You've said that you're a conservative. No, you, you, no. No, you did. You actually said that uh, <coughs> in a podcast that you did two weeks ago. I said I was a conservative. He's not. Yes, he's not, yes you did. So, but my question to you, my question to you is, how do you respond okay. to those critics? Those critics. Okay, let's give it no, stop, 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 it's not stop her. right here. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> stop right there. Your shut up, you fat witch, does seem to be calling out to me right. for his response. And, and, you know and, I mean? Right. And, and that, that wasn't even joy. what I would be. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. But just, just buried deep inside of me, hearing that question phrased that way, shut up, you fat witch, does <laughs> seem to be an option. That's, and of course, what we're trying to say on this day is that's the right. wrong option. That's not that is the wrong what option. you should do. It would feel You're good only in the human. Yeah. Right. You're only human. I don't think, even though Jesus was part human, I don't think that was an option that he felt. Mm. But you, me, probably would feel that way. But here's how he responded. So, so, yes, first thing I want to, I, I, I think it's very important. The quote that you just pointed out about doing something special for the Negro. That's from the book, Why We Can't Wait, that I I just mentioned. Yes. A couple Mm -hmm. paragraphs later, he lays out exactly what that something special was, and it was the Bill of Rights for the Disadvantaged, a broad class-based policy. But he also says you must include race. No, he didn't. He says it's a... Yes, he does. Okay, well, everyone can go... Everyone should go read the book, Why We Can't Wait. Let's not get sidetracked by that. Yeah, give me another I don't think I've been co-opted by anyone. I've only voted twice, both for Democrats, Mm -hmm. although I'm an independent. I would vote for a Republican, Mm -hmm. probably a non-Trump Republican, if they were compelling. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think there's any evidence I've been Mm -hmm. co-opted by anyone, and I think that that's that's an ad hominem tactic people use to not address really the important conversations we're having here. And I I think it's better, and it would be better for everyone if we stuck to the topics rather than but make it about so, me but with no, about no you, evidence but I, I just co-opted. I want to give you the opportunity to respond yeah, to the, I your it. Criti- the criticism. I appreciate it. There's no evidence that, that I've been co-opted by anyone. I have an independent <laughs> podcast. Mm-hmm. I work for CNN as an analyst. Mm-hmm. I write for the free press. I'm independent in all of these endeavors, and no one is paying me to say what I'm saying. I'm saying it because I feel it. Hmm. So what he's saying there is, shut up, you fat witch. (laughs) I think that's what I heard. I think that's what I heard, just in a very nice way. Yeah, you know, and it's like he's he's good at just 
dis- dismantling it with reason, right? Like there's no evidence that this guy has been co-opted by the right. These are arguments that we all used to agree on. They were, I mean, outside of the KKK, if you were not wearing a white hood, most people would say, hey, we shouldn't focus on skin color as much. And now 50% of the population, or at least 50% of our major political parties, have embraced an idea that we should only focus on race or and gender and other and immutable characteristics. Yeah, like I, right. It's 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 horrific that that has happened uh, under all of our watch. See, uh, at least if you're on the you left, know, you've let this happen, and it, you should be it's, on the side of Coleman Hughes and pushing back against it. And there are very few that are. You know, it's amazing to me that the the Democrats get stuck in about 1968. You know what I mean? It's like. It's like they just stopped seeing new things. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, well, you know what? That's why blacks should be able to go to school with whites. And you're like, yeah, okay, we've believed that for (laughs) now 40, 50 years. Maybe even longer. We've been on that. Yeah, we've been on that uh, train, you know, white, white people. Again, there are still some Klan members out there that don't agree, but there's but, also Joy Reid. Yeah. So. Yeah, but that's the uh, thing. Like, they have decided when we, like, the oh, in ni- the 1960s, hey, blacks should be able to go to school with whites. The, the left has reversed that. They now say they I should know. have safe spaces away from whites. Look, I know they, they've I know. legitimately gone the opposite way, and they're acting as right. if we're the crazy ones. I know, I know, and we learned that my generation. I am the last of the boomer generation. Last year, and I grew up in a time where I didn't see color. We didn't do that. You know, I mean, it's not. Yes, there were people. when you're in a bad mm-hmm. section of town bad section of town you might look over your shoulder oh does that because it's black why because i said a bad section of town you all of a sudden assume that it's a black neighborhood who's the racist here (laughs) who's the racist here um uh you know you just don't do that we have gotten to a place or we were at a place to where we wanted to see people for the content of their character, thought that was right, and in many cases, that's the way we judged the world. And it's as if all of these radicals, as if 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000, 2000, well, 2008, I think, was the end of that. I mean, it's like none of those years happened. Like all of the things, all the progress we made didn't happen. We're still in 1965. In what world? Yeah. In what world? Yeah, no, it's true. And you see the way that these people retreated. There was a, another uh, interview that happened. Uh, it was a speech, I think, happened recently. Uh, it was part of the free press, which uh, Coleman Hughes also mentioned in that clip, um, where they interviewed a guy who who did a study, an academic who did a study on uh, police violence against blacks. And mm-hmm. the study uh, came out uh, in an interesting way, not the way the media would have believed it would come out. Now, the right, man who's speaking right. is, uh, I don't have his, I, I misplaced his name, but he, he uh, he's an African-American gentleman who is describing a study he did in academic circles to talk about violence against African-Americans by the police. Listen. I collected a lot of data. We collected millions of observations on uh, everyday use of force that wasn't lethal. We collected thousands of observations on lethal force. And, and it, it was in this moment in 2016 that I realized people lose their minds when they don't like the result. So what my paper showed, you'll see tomorrow, uh, like some of you, uh, was that yes, we saw some bias in the low level uses of force, every day pushing up against cars and things like that. People tend to like that result. But we didn't find any um, uh, racial bias in police shootings. Now. That was really surprising to me because I expected to see it. The little known fact is I had eight full-time RAs that it took to do this over nearly a year. When I found this surprising result, I hired eight fresh ones and redid it to make sure. 
they came up with the same exact answer, and I thought it was robust. And then I went to go give it, and my God, all hell broke loose. It was a 104-page, dense, academic, economics paper with a 150-page appendix, okay? Jeez. It was posted for four minutes when I got my first email. This is full of <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. And I wrote back, how'd you read it that fast? <laughs> That's amazing. You are a genius. <laughs> and I had colleagues take me into to the side and say, don't publish this. Mm. You'll ruin your career. Mm. I said, what are you talking about? I said, what's wrong with it? Do you believe the first part? Yes. Do you believe the second part? Well, it's, the issue is they just don't fit together. We like the first one, but you should publish the, no the second one another time. I said, let me ask this. If the second part about the police shootings, this is a literal conversation. I said to them, if the second part um, showed bias, do you think I would, should publish it then? And they said, yeah, then it would make sense. <laughs> and I said, I guarantee you I'll publish it. We'll see what happens. So it was, it was you know, I, I lived under under um, police protection for about 30 or 40 days. I had a seven Jeez. day old daughter at the time. I remember going and shopping for it because you know, when you have a newborn, you think you have enough diapers, you don't. So I, I was going to the grocery store to get diapers with the armed guard. It was crazy. Jeez. It was really, truly crazy. For just saying the truth and saying, hey, maybe police aren't intentionally trying to commit a genocide on African-Americans, like uh, something that I think everyone in their heart actually knows. But the evidence showed that it was true. And because he published actual evidence about actual things that go on in our country, he had to live under police protection mm -hmm. for months. Let me just leave it at this. Shut up, you fat witch. <laughs> 